This is the complete accuracy breakdown of the new ROC R3 Pro LiDAR, where I'm going to be comparing it to the ROC R360, the ROC R2A, and the DJI L1. If you guys are interested in looking at LiDAR data accuracy, and more particularly the R3 Pro, then this video is for you. I'm going to break it down into a few distinct sections. We got a runway data set with 178 check shots. We have another data set, which is an urban data set of a building and a parking lot. And then the third one is SLAM. And that one's pretty cool as well. So I'm gonna jump right into these data sets. I'm gonna talk about how I got the data, how I processed it, and the accuracy from each one. And you're gonna learn a lot about LiDAR data in the process. And you're gonna learn a lot about the new R3 Pro. So let's jump into it. Up first, I got the R3 Pro runway data set, and here we can see the data set in RGB view. And all those green dots, those are all check shots I got with a GPS. Now, really quick, let me tell you about those check shots. I went ahead and set up an inlet over an NGS monument as a base station, and then had a second inlet, and I did RTK from one to the other one. And I used the second one to go get all of these check shots. So we can see I was out there, got 178 all on these different features. And I'm gonna go ahead and really quick open up the GCP data here. So here we can see this is actually from the Inlet app. So these are all the GCPs. I'm jumping right into this because the accuracy talk right from the top of the video. And we can see a plot right here of the RMS. And that's actually in feet, not in meters. Uh, and so this is all about 0.035 feet, it's about one centimeter. And the worst it gets up here is 0.042 feet, which is about one and a half centimeters, I think. Someone fact check me on that one. So that is the control shots that you're seeing over here, uh, and that's kind of the accuracy that you're getting. Now let me go ahead and zoom in, and the first thing I wanna take a look at is the RGB. Well, first of all, it already looks pretty damn good. So we can see right there the striping right here inside the, the five, sometimes when they're not in focus or they're misaligned, things look like blurred and kind of fuzzy looking. You'll see this a lot in the L1 data sets. Things look very soft, very soft focus, some would say. So I think this looks pretty darn good, but. The real tell is if we take the RGB and we turn on the intensity gradient. And right there, so the intensity is the underlying LiDAR data set and then the RGB is the photos that are stitched on top of it. And if we're looking at right here, this looks phenomenal. You can basically use the RGB to align your data set, I would say. Look at that, that's spot on. Let's take a look at a different location. I don't know, let's look up here. You see this long white line? I'm gonna go ahead and RGB view, ready? That looks pretty spot on, guys. Yep, I'd say that is uh, looking quite good. So that is looking at the RGB. Now, the reason the RGB is aligned so well is because on Rock Desktop, we released a brand new feature. And this allows the user to actually choose points in the LiDAR data set and choose points in the RGB part of the LiDAR data set and say this point equals that one. And you can do that like 10 times and you click calibrate and it realigns your photos to your data set. So no more guesswork, you just choose, 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 click go, and then boom, what you're seeing here is what you get. So that whole workflow is really awesome to have that control of your data set, and anyone can do it now. It doesn't take an expert with knowing geometries or anything, you just gotta click and click. If you can play iSpy, you can calibrate a LiDAR data now. So <laughs> it's pretty crazy. All right, so next up, let's go ahead and just zoom in on this data set and start looking down down the data set. Look at that. I actually I gotta turn the GCBs off because they're they are bigger than the fuzz of the data set. I never thought I'd be saying that. But look at this. I'm just gonna fly through that. Look at this. Flat as a pancake, guys. Unheard of. <laughs> Let's go ahead and look at the strip alignment. So I'm gonna go flip over into the GPS time. And so now we can clearly see how I flew. So you see the different strips, different passes. And we can see here in this blue and, and light blue section, first of all, just right off the bat, you see it looks perfectly mixed, but I can go ahead and zoom in here, come right down that bore site again, down the barrel, look straight down. And guys, this is, this is perfectly aligned, so. If you have an R3 Pro, or any rock product for that matter, I don't think you have to worry about this anymore. Uh, this is kind of most older LiDAR systems, you had to bore sight them. And this is something that if you talk to anyone else, they're gonna tell you, oh, make sure you bore sight. Well guys, 
if you make the product correctly, you don't have to do this anymore. So this is, uh, we're in LiDAR 2.0 now, not, not 1.0. So I would say perfectly strip aligned. Now, let me go ahead and bring in that R360. Let me bring in the R2A and bring in the DJI L1 and take a look. First up, let me bring in the R360 on top of the R3 Pro. So we can see, let's guess which one's which. R3 Pro is in purple and the 360 is red. So basically, I'm just gonna zoom through this data set. We can see that the R3 is basically flies a pancake. It just looks amazing, guys. Now, I didn't bring in the R2A and the L1 yet, but let's go ahead and bring those in now. Turn on the L1, turn on the R2A. <laughs> well, the L1 doesn't look great, that's in blue. Uh, L1's kind of all wacky, wackadoodle all over the place. Uh, really high, really low. Uh, yellow is the R2A, and again, you can just see that R3 is right in the middle, looking fantastic. Now guys, again, this is this is LiDAR 2.0, I called it earlier, and that's because things that you never thought were possible are becoming possible, and we're really committed to making a lot more advancements on this, so this is just the beginning. This isn't even the end. I'll tell you what, the L1 is not doing itself any favors here. Let me keep zooming through. You can see it, it's coming in, the L1, the fuzz is coming in, and I feel like I'm going into warp drive. <laughs> Alright, well I, I hope that's enough for you guys to zoom through and, and get a good feeling, good understanding of what we're talking about. But let me go ahead and actually show you the true numbers, the actual accuracy numbers, and that is comparing the R3 Pro to all those ground control points. Let's take a look at that now. So we're back on the R3 Pro data set. We're in the RGB view. I have all those GCPs laid on top of the data set. And let me go ahead and pull open the accuracy report. Dun, 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 dun. Boom. 0 0.034 feet. If you convert that over to a centimeter, it's about one centimeter. So this is comparing against all of those GCPs, all 178 of them. And we're coming up with 0 0.034 feet. It's it is that good. It's that good. You can see the mean deviation is a thousandth of a foot. Okay, that's not even what we're talking about here. This is beyond the, the control, the, beyond the, the, the numbers. So we can see all the actual uh, checkpoints here, but at the end of the day, we're getting this 0 0.034 feet. That's phenomenal. If you told me two years ago we'd be getting that today, I would say you're crazy. But here we are today, and we're getting it, so boom. It's pretty awesome. All right guys, so that is the runway data set. What did we do? We went over the RGB, the colorization. I told you about this new feature to help you get perfect alignment. Um, it should come out of the box that way, but you can always get it a little better if you'd like to. Uh, we looked at the strip alignment. Uh, then we looked at the uh, fuzz, and we compared that to the R360, the R2A, the L1. We clearly saw that difference there. And then we just looked at the actual accuracy report from those 178 control shots, check shots, sorry. Um, and we see that final actually statement of 0 0.034 feet, about one centimeter. Pretty awesome. Next up, let's go ahead and look at another data set, and that's of an urban setting. Uh, I did some planometrics here. But let me go ahead and bring this up. It's a building, a parking lot. We have some inverts in there. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. And here we go. I got this next data set queued up here. And what we're looking at is a building, a parking lot, and I can zoom in and all the green dots are the check shots I got. Now I went out and got 99 check shots and I know what you're thinking. I got 99 check shots, but inaccuracy isn't one, it's not. Uh, Cause you know, the reason it's not is because I used the rock base with the emlid and I used rock RTK. So I tied into the rock RTK with the emlid and went and got these 99 check shots. Uh, and some of them I did not include and I'll show you why because this is pretty darn cool. So right here, why didn't I include this one? Well, because, my friend, those check shots were actually located at the bottom of this storm drain, which I captured with the R3 Pro from the sky while flying over it. What? Okay, that's pretty cool. So we got those check shots, I mean, so I didn't include it because it wasn't in the surface for the accuracy report, but I'm showing you that I can fly from the sky and capture a storm drain? Yeah, that happened. Uh, and then, the other ones are things like this, right? So I, I got the top of this and the bottom of it. So I got rid of the tops. You see what, see what I'm saying? Uh, so let me go ahead and just jump right into the accuracy port for this one because I think 
coming off the runway data set onto this one. I want to show you that it's working not in just one location, it works in multiple locations. So come to deliverables, open up that accuracy report. Here we have this R3 Pro aerial launch demo. Boom. And we're seeing 0 0.035 feet accuracy. This is 99 GCPs. And inaccuracy, my friends, is not one of them. That is one centimeter accurate. That's crazy. Okay, so we're showing this again and just really driving home the point that what we're doing with this new R3 Pro is something that's very unique and different and not being seen other places. So we're pushing the limits and we're gonna keep pushing them. Uh, let me come back. Now we're looking at the colorization. It looks gorgeous. I'm gonna show you a few other things. Let's look at that strip alignment again. Uh, GPS time, you can see how I flew. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Let's just zoom in. Oh, look at all this. This is all the HVAC equipment on the rooftop. Looks gorgeous. You can see everything. And this is flying. You get more accurate data if you actually go up to it. This is just way above. Now, let's come to this gable. And you can see right there. Do I need to show you anymore? That's the alignment. It looks great. Uh, let's come back to the RGB. Now, this is actually one really cool thing with the RGB. So we, this is a pipe on the roof. And this is just something that you don't always see. The pipe is yellow. <laughs> so that's how well alignment is. So that's that's pretty crazy. I'm really, really proud of the team for making, making this new workflow that gives you such great accuracies in the R3 Pro. Okay guys, so what did we cover here? I just wanted to bring in and show you using the Rock RTK network for one, uh, using with the MLID, getting some control shots, some check shots, and then showing you what that accuracy is of the R3 Pro aerial data set to those check shots. Again, 0 0.035 feet, about one centimeter. Pretty fantastic. Now guys, let's go to the third example. I did slam because this is not just an aerial unit. It is also a handheld unit that you can go indoors, you can map, you do mobile mapping. And that's what I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you mobile slam mapping. And I'm gonna tell you about a few other cool things that are coming down in the next, I think just two weeks, this will be released. So by the time you're watching this, it's probably already out there. But let me show you some mobile mapping. And this is kind of what an autonomous vehicle sees. Okay guys, so this is the mobile mapping I did with the SLAM and the R3 Pro. Let me give you a little context about what happened to get this data set. This is actually someone from, I believe, Vancouver. They had an issue where they bought a bunch of vehicles for the city and they wanted to see if the wires coming down across the top of the roads were too low for these new vehicles. I think the trash trucks, they might be too tall. That could be a big problem. But what we did is I had a meeting with them and about, it was like an hour and a half later. So it was like 8.30 in the morning, we were talking about this. I said, okay, let me try this out. I took the R3 Pro, jumped into my car, drove around a bunch of blocks of a neighborhood, about 25 minutes of driving, got back to the house, uploaded the data, processed the data, and then had a meeting showing them this, all in an hour and a half. I believe it actually got done in an hour. It was like 30 minutes of driving, 30 minutes to produce this. And this is the result. So this is, this is pretty cool, guys. This right here is the slam data from driving around. Let me zoom in. Right here I crossed over the same spot four times. And if I just zoom around, first of all, look at this house. This is driving by at like 25 miles an hour. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this into the intensity gradient because I think it just looks cool. Look at this. That looks phenomenal. That's just driving around and capturing this data. And obviously you can see the street signs and you can see all of the lane marking here. Um, you can see some of this uh, accessibility ramps. You can really easily see the slope of those ramps there, guys. And this is just driving around. Pretty darn good. <laughs> Pretty darn good if you ask me. You see some really beautiful looking curbs. I mean, that curb looks amazing. And then over here, I thought this was pretty nifty as well. Just look at, look at this tree. Look at that tree. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so this is, this is great. So again, the, the flatness of the data set, it's like a pancake. Very, very, very good, very impressive. Clearly see the wires, clearly see all the curbs, you can clearly see all the, the frontage of the buildings, trees, diameters as well. Um, it works really reliable, and this took no preparation. I literally held my hand out the window with the R3 Pro and drove around. I think I was holding with the left hand, driving with my right hand. 
<laughs> processes. So it turned out pretty fantastic. Now, let me tell you about a couple of things that are coming in the very near future, which I just mentioned. One is putting GCPs into your Slam data set. So you're gonna be able to see this, like what, I, what I'm showing you here, and then tag targets. So maybe you're, I'm gonna come back to the data, take a look at this. So maybe here on this stop right here, you went out with a, with a GPS and, and captured that S. And then now you're gonna be able to tag that S uh, as that point, your GCP, and click reprocess. And it will then reprocess the SLAM, aligning it to all those GCPs. So it's gonna make perfect SLAM data sets. And this is actually the foundation for our next steps of actually taking the GPS and SLAM and augmenting the two together into one seamless workflow where you can go from, I have GPS, I don't have GPS, ins inside, outside, in the air, all together, one unified processing workflow. Uh, and that is gonna come very soon. We're working on it and it's looking really good. So those things are coming. First is the GCP alignment, then is this future thing. And then also we have colorization coming. I've already seen some test data sets. It looks really good. Uh, it'll be here really soon. So RGB colorization, accuracy with the GCPs, all in SLAM and mobile, all is coming very soon and it looks awesome. So really guys, I hope you see what I'm trying to tell you here. With this new technology, we're able to get data that you haven't seen before. It is incredibly accurate. You're able to be very versatile, whether it's in the air on a drone, in your hand, handheld. I have a video, I did a cave and I merged it with the aerial data set, uh, Sharkfin Cove, check it out, it's really cool. And then we have a lot of cool things coming along the, in the works as well. And these are all software upgrades to the R3 Pro. So you get the R3 Pro, all this stuff is available to you to start leveraging. And a secret, we might have photogrammetry coming. More on that later. Okay guys, hope you guys liked the video. Hope you learned a few things about accuracy. Hope you learned some about the R3 Pro. Obviously I'm very proud of it. Uh, if you guys like the video and if you like this content and you wanna learn more about drones, LiDAR, 3D data, I hope you guys like the video. Subscribe, give me a thumbs up, share the video, and I'll see you here next time here on Indiana Drones.